Hello and welcome to part 2b of this laminate and furniture linoleum video series. In this part I will continue where we ended part 2a and I will complete this tabletop for the bathroom cabinet. Before starting to cut in my laminate there are some recommendations how to avoid warping later on and I would like to go through this recommendation and the first one is by far the most important one. Recommendation number one I would almost call a rule and that is to always laminate both sides of your workpiece. So in this case I will use this white laminate for my top surface and the back side that won't be seen later will have this brown cheaper laminate. Recommendation number two is to keep the laminate direction the same on the front surface and on the back surface. Here you see the back side of a laminate and it has almost like a grain structure running this direction of the arrow and this shouldn't be mixed on the two sides that you're laminating. Recommendation number three is to have this laminate direction running the same way as your long side of your workpiece. So as mentioned recommendation or rule number one is really important and I always follow that to laminate both sides of the workpiece. Number two and three are not that critical and I don't always follow these recommendations and so far on the pieces I built I haven't had any problems with warping. But this time let's at least follow recommendation number two to have the laminate direction the same on both sides. This piece here is a leftover from a previous product and this is the white laminate and this will be used for the front. This big roll is the cheaper laminate and that will be used for the back. To lay out the cut lines on my laminate I aim for about 2 to 3 mm overhang of the laminate on each side. That means 5 mm bigger than my workpiece in total dimensions. I find the track saw to be the easiest way to break down these big sheets. Well that was the simple one, now let's tackle this rolled one. It was delivered like this and if we only cut the tape this will unfold and fill your entire shop plus a little bit more. And then trying to roll it back on your own is like wrestling a crocodile. So I have a few tricks how to handle these rolls when I'm working on my own. The trick here is to keep the roll as a roll and only unfold it as much as I need. So I rotate my roll to estimate how much I need and I ended up in this position, this is the outer edge. And then I clamped the roll to my workbench both on this side and the other side. And then when I cut the tape this end will unfold and end up somewhere here. And that should give me plenty enough for the part that I need. This could be my best film sequence ever or a complete disaster. Let's see how it goes. Voila! And then to make this into a roll again so I can tape it together, I roll it back and put a quick clamp here. This means that I can loosen the clamps to my workbench. Then I can tape this thing together again and loosen the clamp. I tape the other side as well and loosen that clamp. And we are back into a perfect roll. You might have the impression that half blind dovetails or any other fancy joints it's rather difficult, but I can tell you that handling these laminate rolls on your own, that is difficult. I then use my crosscut sled to cut the laminate to my desired length. I will also make a cutout in my laminates for this opening here in my workpiece. It could be that it would have worked fine like this, and then just trim around it after gluing. But I don't like to have these large free hanging areas of laminate. And the reason for that is that big free hanging areas you easily catch with your finger or the edge on your workbench or something and then you can split the laminate in over your actual base surface. So I've laid out this cutout with some margin to my base outline and then I drilled a couple of holes in both my sheets of laminate. Then I just use a chisel to chop this off. It's finally time to glue on the laminates. And speaking of glue, if you check the laminate manufacturer's website, they recommend different glues for this. Many people use contact cement. I don't. I think it smells really bad and it easily creates a mess in the shop when I handle it. So instead I use normal white wood glue, PVA glue, here in the outdoor version since this will be for a bathroom cabinet. So I want the the glue joint to be waterproof. After I put on the laminate on both sides I will clamp this 
workpiece between two sheets of MDF and I would treat this glue up pretty much as if it was wood I was gluing. And before gluing I make sure that I have no dust particles or sawdust on my workpiece or on my laminates. They could later create bumps in the visible laminate if there was. Then I apply the glue and spread it with a roller and I make sure to have glue on the entire base surface. Then I apply the laminate and here I check for overhang on all sides so the laminate is not inside my base surface. Then I flip it over and do the same procedure for the other side. With both sides glued I put an MDF sheet on top of this sandwich and then I clamp this together using clamping coils and then I put some extra clamps in between the coils as well. If you have many parts to make with this gluing method you can glue several at a time. So when I made these 12 cabinet doors I glued three at a time and I lined them up in the gluing so they acted as clamping coils for each other and then I only had MDF on the two outermost parts not between them. So. The glue has dried and I have removed the clamps and the part looks straight and nice and the laminate is overhanging my base on all sides. Then I install a bare and guided trim bit in my router and as extra security against scratching I put on this low friction tape. Usually this is not needed but if you have any sharp edge or anything here in the base that might scratch the laminate so this is just extra precaution against that. Now the laminate is trimmed flush with the base on both sides and it's time to round the corners. I will make these rounds on the router table so I installed a 10mm round over bit here. The jig you see here is my multi jig for working parts in the vertical orientation standing up like this or like this. This piece here that I clamped to my jig is just a piece of scrap and the purpose of this is to act as support and prevent tear out on the exit side of the routing. Then in the forward motion I have a stop and that is to not route into the jig itself. Some light sanding later and the rounds looks quite good. This extra part I did will be used as a routing template to round over the two remaining corners that I couldn't reach in this setup on the router table. Then I drilled 12mm holes from the sides and these holes matches the micro rig dovetail clamps. Then I clamped the template to the workpiece at two positions. And insert the trim routing bit in the router and then I template route these corners. Of course there are other ways to round these corners. The first one I can think of is a pre-made template that looks like this but has these references on the sides. Those ones you can buy quite cheap nowadays. But this time I did this quick and dirty template since it only was two corners. Before making the edge profiles I check all my outer surfaces and radius transitions. Since any imperfection here will be directly transferred to the edge profile later on. It's time to profile the edges, but before we do that I will show you a little bit about profiling these materials, laminates and furniture linoleums. On solid wood you can put any profile you like, but on these materials some profiles works much better than others. We start with the ones that doesn't work and then I show you which ones that does work. I would say that anything where you come in at a low angle against your laminate or linoleum, it could be a big round, a small round, or it could be a chamfer at a low angle, those profiles will look really bad on these materials. There are at least two reasons to why this low angle transition or tangent transition looks really bad on laminate and furniture linoleums. Number one is that if you come in tangent it's really easy that this edge gets a bit wavy. This would hardly be visible in solid wood but here you see it as a major color difference. The next reason is that when you come in tangent or low angle you will show a lot of the inner layers in the laminate. That's the slightly brown thing you see here. And you will also see a white line where you almost routed through the laminate. That was a big round on white but showing a small round on black that looks just as bad or even worse. 
to quickly also mention the furniture linoleum and the low angle or tangent transition. Here the material is thicker than the laminate, so these areas where I show the inner layers, they will be even wider on furniture linoleums. So I consider a low angle or a full tangent profile to be a no-go on these materials, but feel free to use them if you like the look. Instead I will focus on the profiles that I think do work or at least looks acceptable on these materials. The plain 45 degree chamfer works quite okay and it doesn't matter if it's a small chamfer or a big chamfer, you will still show the same amount of inner layers in the laminate that was on white. And I think it looks even better on black since the inner layers in the laminate are quite dark, so the darker the laminate color the less you see the inner layer transition. My preferred profile for these materials are something that looks like this, so it's a full round but it comes in at a high angle on both sides. So if we compare this with a circle template, the diameter of the circle or the profile is 26 mm while this material is around 17 mm. Combining this profile with this bigger corner radius will give your piece a soft look to it, but you can also make it quite crisp and sharp with these minimum corners. The thing I really like about this profile is that this wooden frame that surrounds your workpiece that will be very visible from the front, but at the same time you show minimum amount of laminate edges. The way I make these profiles is that I use standard round over bits where the radius is much bigger than half my material thickness and then I run this from two sides, one from this side and then I flip my workpiece and make another run from the other side. If routing this on a router table with a fence it's no problem since you don't have to rely on the bearing, you can rely on the fence instead. But if you want rounded corners you have to route this freehand and then you have to make sure that in the second run that the bearing has something to ride on. There could be a small flat surface left here or a small step but that is easily sanded away after the routing. Here you can of course tweak the amount of wood that you see when you look on your workpiece from this side here. A uh, bigger radius will show less wooden frame around your workpiece while a smaller radius will show a bigger wooden frame. That was a lot of talk about profiles, but I think on a part like this with minimum amount of solid wood to play with, the profiles are worth some extra attention and the chosen profile can really set the appearance of the final piece. It's time to run the profiles on the router table and just as when I trim the edges where I take my router base, I have now taped my workpiece to avoid scratching the laminates. I said that these materials are scratch resistant and they are, but here you would put a lot of pressure on the on your workpiece and if you have like the smallest smallest metal edge on your insert ring that might scratch the laminates. I start with the router bit slightly too low and make the first pass on both sides. Then I raise the bit to my final height and make a finishing pass on both sides. I don't know if you can see this, but in the final pass the bearing doesn't have any really straight surface to ride on. But since the profile is almost vertical there, it doesn't matter that much. You will get a small small step that we sand away later. When sanding these profiles I start with a sandpaper on a block to remove the small step. And then I switch to manual mode to be able to follow the shape of the profile. For the final touch and especially for the corners I use this kind of soft sponge sanding pad. Otherwise if you sand a corner like this with something hard it's really easy that you get like facets and not the smooth transition but this soft sponge will follow the shape everywhere. I'm done with the sanding and it's time to put the finish on the edges. And when I finish these materials usually I get a bit of overflow onto the laminate on both the front and the back side. Uh, usually that is no problem, I wipe it off using isopropanol before it hardens. You have to be a bit quicker on the back side, the brown side, because here is no protective layer and uh, the finish will stick to this material quicker than the visible side. Pretty much the same goes for the furniture linoleums as the laminates. Uh, as long as you are quick to wipe off the excess, it doesn't stick to the material.
you can see some domino holes here as well Therefore not included in this video that's for later mounting of this tabletop onto the cabinet the top is finished and complete and mounted onto the rest of the cabinet that looks like this now and here we can see the finish of the top it looks quite okay it's slightly protruding on all sides of the cabinet to cover the doors and so on if we take a look inside I put this push to open mechanism here in the center shelf that makes for a quite clean solution to open the doors and as you can see everything is laminated both front side and back side and has these edge bandings in solid oak so although this is a quite simple build it took a while to laminate all these parts and the cutout that I did here on the back side is for the drain from the sink in the bathroom and that caused cutouts in other parts as well as you can see but it really doesn't matter you will never see this side of the cabinet anyway personally I think this bathroom cabinet is a typical example where laminate can be used to its advantage here especially the top surface but maybe also the sides and the front of the doors will be exposed to water and toothpaste and hair cleaning products and everything almost daily and here the laminate is a really durable material that is easy to clean off and then combining the laminate with these edge creams in solid oak gives this cabinet a slightly more custom woodworking look to it rather than an off-the-shelf product that you just bought in the store we have reached the end of part 2 in this video series in part 3 I would focus on integrated wooden features combined with these materials. It could typically be drawer handles or cabinet door handles or pulls. And I would build these three samples that you see in front of me, but more about that in part three. Thanks for watching.